first of all, thank the organizer and uh, invite me to uh, a small action or some, something like that and, uh, that I prepared. But, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really proud to be here and really happy. Uh, so let's think where I come from. We are here. We just discussed a lot where you see uh, that I'm an Italian, but in the south. Uh, you can see uh, this is Africa, so we are we are quite in the south. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you, you find I, I I have a, a lot of problems. Uh. So okay, the, this is Catania. The logo of my university is this elephant because it seems that elephant was still present in our uh, Sicily uh, since not so long ago. Uh, actually, I work at the Department of Science and Chemical Science of so uh, Chemistry. Uh, this is the building uh, that is located here. This is the, the city. So you can see in the same day you can enjoy the mountain because this is an active volcano. Uh, or you can say by sea, so my students can enjoy both sides. Uh, or or, or you, you can just walk on the inside Sicily. You will be fully uh, covered by tourists, of course, because this is the main activity that people do. Okay, you can have uh, more details on the web page that we have. So, what's about you? I, uh, I told you. So, uh, once I start to uh, have talk with about my communication. I spend time uh, to explain people what my communication is. Uh, okay, right now I'm going to skip this. But uh, what I need is, is uh, to understand what is your audience. Because I I always be in the, in the wrong place <laughs> when I speak about my communication. So uh, I guess that everybody here can understand this, except for me. Maybe there is some wrong stuff because I just copied the paste from uh, YouTube. Um, if I say <coughs> Big Bang Theory, where are you? Left or right? Uh, I more or less on the left. Okay? Uh, that, that, that's my point of view of, of, of your stuff. Of course, uh, if you are a biologist, you know what, why you have to always uh, run around a uh, flame in order to have clean. Uh, I guess only me and Federico knows because this <coughs> sea is a chiron. So that is something very chemistry and related. That actually you don't need to understand why the communication, I believe. So you can say, say. Okay, so this is disclaimer. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a math person. I'm just uh, um, a curious guy that uh, moved to another topic uh, during my research time. Okay. Here we are, we are trying to do not use waves, radio waves, to communicate. Uh, the, the, the environment where we are working is what is the finite wave tonight, but well, you don't want to use wave. Uh, I really like this definition because uh, my point of view of the micro communication uh, is really fit with this uh, definition. Uh, we are working actually in, uh, if, if you like, in this field of application, if, if you can understand what application means in uh, MC. Uh, a couple of words. Okay, medical, medical doctors say so self explaining. Also, implantable, you need to have something inside the body. But by definition, for the OMEA community, active implanted medical device means that you need a source of energy that this energy cannot be grabbed from the body. So actually it means that you need a battery and something in smart. So if you have this kind of active implanted medical device, you are working on this field by the mission, by the union community. We are working like this. Uh, of course, we are trying to change, to, to swap information between these ideal implanted medical devices, changing the Swapping of energy by means of swapping materials, matters. Um, and when we start to think about microcommunication from a, a chemical point of view, we, we uh, with uh, friends of pilot working with me uh, in this uh, travel, 
um, we start what kind of molecule is the best. Uh, at the end, we, we ended up that uh, the molecule is not good enough, at least at this stage, to, to deal with this kind of problem, because molecules are too small. You need to include uh, quantum mechanics in most of the case. So we, we have to be uh, to use picky stuff, and that, that's our point of view. So we move it to nanoparticles, since because we are we love nanoparticles because we synthesize nanoparticles uh, so much, and uh, and we work in the we work in nanoparticles. Uh, and if you look at the literature, you already know that there's been really used to with a lot. Uh, this is a wonderful example of communication at nanoscale between nano stuff. Uh, you have group uh, lactose, then an enzyme, glucose, acid, the acid is closed now. This uh, cycle testing is open, release some of uh, acid cysteine that really that cut this chemical and release some routine free speed that is growing because it works. So this is the very, uh, the very nice example. Uh, with uh, this kind of uh, Janus nanoparticles, you can have self-propelled uh, particles, or so if you treat with some chemicals, they bubble all in one side of the particles, so they move on their own. So you can even use this kind of particles as self-propelling. This is something that uh, you, you can do with nanoparticles. We try to summarize our point of view uh, in this review. That is one of the activities that I'm going to do to transfer the uh, molecular communication in my community. <laughs> we are trying to uh, make this dissemination activity. Uh, for us, it's important that a particle uh, should be easy to prepare. Uh, you cannot spend a lot of time preparing particles, otherwise uh, you will uh, lose the, the run towards my communication. Uh, in chemistry, everything right now has to be eco-friendly. Uh, of course, you have it has to be biocompatible, uh, because the, at least in, in the environment where that you want to use. Uh, if you want and we are focusing on in liquid acid, <coughs> so not in hair. So you need something that is soluble or in somehow dispersible in the liquid fluids. And of course, it has to be easy to detect uh, with the standard technology right now. So, uh, among all particles, we focus it on this kind of particles. There are carbon-based nanoparticles. Uh, they are easy synthesized by either thermal uh, decomposition. Uh, I'm not going to show you the details on chemistry. I have but very small uh, uh, video that can show you how we can prepare, you can prepare this kind of particles. <laughs> Just put your as here, warm up to the heater. If you reach the temperature, the, uh, your materials became brown and the pH go down. You can adjust the pH to seven. Then you get a, a, a mess. If you use dialysis, you can uh, separate your nanoparticles, obtaining this kind of low particles. These kind of particles are important because you can look at them by using fluorescence. They dry if you hit them with the proper uh, wavelength. So it's very easy to do them and there is no uh, trouble for preparing in any lab. Okay? So, now this was prepared from one of my master's students and I tried to <laughs> show you. Uh, okay, this is a TEM. Uh, so they are very small, something like 20, from 10 to 20 nanometers. They bright in the dark. So if you hit with the uh, ultraviolet, they blow. So uh, my students love to make selfie with this <laughs> blowing uh, 
uh, stuff. They are quite nice. We we can uh, produce from any uh, organic source. We we'll use unsold lemon that in Sicily we have not planted, but that's not a problem. Uh, friends of mine, uh, the pharmacy department told us that they are biocompatible, at least according to the test that they do. They can be uh, compatible with the body, and they are one solvable, and they, I told you, they thrive on the dark, so it's very easy to select that. Uh, back to the molecular communication. The fair, very first uh, example that we we report is based on uh, concentration shift key, uh, actually a treasure, very simple, zero one. one uh, But as you know, there is an, uh, an inevitable dilution of the system. Uh, so the density of the of the signal with the travel distance has to be down and soon will be difficult to detect or, or understand if you are on one from zero states. Uh, but look at this. This kind of particles has this strange behavior. Once you increase the amount of particles, the fluorescence goes down. They, they, because it's quenched. They, they, if you have a lot of particles, they hit each other and then obtain, and then relax, but not blowing light, but uh, emitting the heat, warming up. Uh, but if you look at this plot on the opposite, so it, it means that you are going to deal with your particles. They are going to dry them. They are going to emit more light. So uh, my idea was this could compensate the dilution that occurs during the traveling. So let's uh, try make some uh, very simple theoretical. If you have this, uh, this is the typical linear response or what you have. Okay, we have a lack of sensitivity in the Then we have a linear response and then typically you have uh, some uh, saturation effect. So I imagine if I, I ha have this kind of nonlinear response, what happens to the signal con uh, related to the concentration? As you can see, I would expect that better uh, uh, detection of the system because of this strange situation right here. Uh, then we moved on the lab in order to uh, test if this uh, uh, hypothesis can be done. This is the scheme of our uh, prototype. Uh, I will skip the, um, any other prototype that we already discussed. It. We have, uh, okay, transmitter, channels and receiver. Uh, we have a syringe pump that, just a normal pump uh, that uh, any medical doctor use when you are in the hospital to remove some, some, something in your blood. Uh, then we use this six-way pulpous injection valve. We have a microfluidic pad and then of course fluorescence detector. Uh, let me use um, a few words on how we release the particles. We release the particles by using this six-way injection valve. Uh, this is the scheme. Here we have the pump. This is actually the channel, and here there is the detector. What we do is have a sample loop here that we control. We can control the volume of this loop. Once the, uh, the, the valve is switched on, you will have the insertion, instantaneous insertion of the loop. I have a If you fill in the loop right now, okay, this is the loop. Then we switch off on the valve. You can see that right now, you see? You have an instantaneous injection of a plug of information particles on your flowing part. So if the, this loop, uh, uh, in our case, is very small, it's five microliters. So you have, a, let's say, a delta layer of, uh, of particles in the flow group. So, and you can control this very, very well. We have no problem with the uh, reproduction of <coughs> Sorry, what for us means microfluidic channel? We are in a macro scale. 
but we are uh, uh, looking also at very low diameters of this point. So we are not working on microfluidic chips. We have very long tubes uh, from 30 centimeters to 3 meters, uh, but we can control the internal diameter. We have difficult we inject by microliters of sample. Receiver. Since we are looking uh, at the fluorescence of the particles, we have a standard fluorescence detector. Uh, the flow cell is small, it's 18 microliters, and we are able to detect the absorbance of the, of the sample, but also the emission. Uh, we use a 90 degree detection in order to avoid any scattering from, from the particles. So in the meantime, we are able to detect the absorbance and fluorescence. Uh, we have a, 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 also a new way to do this. More, we bought uh, from Torlap this kind of spectrometers that uh, allow us to use this kind of flow cell by using this kind of uh, fibers. That, that you can uh, eat light and get the, the light back from the, from the sample. Okay, going back to our uh, idea. This is what we have from material point of view. This is uh, how absorb the absorption response of our particles is more or less linear. It's similar to the green one, I guess. And this is the how the emission goes with the concentration. So if you in, uh, decrease the concentration, they flow in volume, then of course you are so diluted that you have no more particles, so it drops down. Uh, this is the, the, the waterfall plot. So what we did is that uh, we uh, actually tried to boost in, in, in our system. And uh, this is the very first sample of whatever communication we did. We reported in 2016. Uh, Lamsan is the, the agronomist of my lab. It's my laboratory for my lab. It's an anthropology. Uh, we, this is the symbols, this is what we expect that is the experiment. This was, was more or less the first one uh, that, uh, that we did. As you can see, we, we can use very long point. We can have two, two meters because of this flowing, uh, blowing up during the, uh, the, the evolution. This is the first pro, uh, report that we have. Then we moved, uh, uh, I guess, um, I would say, uh, difficult, more difficult, more difficult. Let's have you have a uh, variable distance between dx and rx. Uh, this is something that could be uh, could happen. How uh, we can solve this problem? Let's try to do that. What we uh, included is some reaction. Since we are working with molecules or particles, in this case with a simple molecule, uh, we have the opportunity to make reaction, the four reaction on these particles that uh, most of uh, the literature that I read is missing. Uh, it's a pity because uh, since you have a molecule, it's a pity that do you do not use during the travel some reaction inside. The only reaction in, that uh, in, in general we consider is the interaction with the receiver. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a pity. So let's think what we can do. So we started for a molecule that does not uh, fluoresce, okay, and becomes fluorescent once uh, it fluoresces. You see, it, 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 this molecule loses these uh, arms and becomes fluorescent. Okay, it's very easy. Uh, it happens when you add some of the H. Uh, all the equations are known. You can include in the model. Uh, I can do it, so you can do it <laughs> for sure. I, what I would like to stress that in there, in here there is the pH, okay? So it means that I can influence the rate by changing the pH. So I can control the velocity uh, means to, ch to transform a non fluorescence particle in a fluorescence particle by changing the pH. But, uh, this is an intermediate, doesn't care, this is the product of the reaction. So look what, this is a lot scale, this is not, okay? So look at what we expect. We expect that there is a 
the direction of the consultation with the time, because this, during the traveling, of course there is the dilution, but this is transforming of this one, okay, with some kinetic that I can control. So it means that uh, according to this Q, to K, uh, there is something like this. This is the concentration of the fluorescent stuff. So you can see here that from 5,000 to 20,000, the signal is more or less stable. It does not depend on the, on the traveling concentration. Because, because this is transforming in another stuff with a kinetic that is compensating the dilution. So it means that if my detector moves, I can use an, uh, only one threshold to get zero on B. So it means that uh, I will not have any problem for this kind of, uh, for choosing the threshold that depends on the distance between the X and that. Uh, this is again the, the, the same, same experiment. As you can see, it depends on the pH. You can have uh, more or less the same uh, response on the as intensity. Even if you use uh, 30 centimeter, one meter, or one meter and a half long tube, so it does not depend on this. Of course, you will have a problem of timing because if your uh, detector moves. Uh, you will have a problem of timing between uh, the, the, uh, how do you say the time slot, right? Okay, then, then you need to control. Uh, this problem of timing also occurs if you have no stable V. Um, in most of the cases, we, we consider that we have a stable and constant uh, drift velocity of transfer. But in body, I cannot uh, consider this. I always have. Uh, fluctuation of, uh, of, of velocity. So, uh, what happens if I have this kind of variable drift? If I am releasing this at the transmitter, what I would expect is, is, is something like that. I cannot uh, have a easy detection of a transmitter because there are once the drift slow during the travel, this uh, bit here it becomes his, then the rising of velocity get this very close, so you have some interaction here. And when I have very fast, I have uh, intense and bright because it does not change. Uh, this is a problem that we try to deal with. Uh, again, exploiting the reaction of the non-particles. Another possibility that I have with the particles is that I, that I can quench or switch off or switch on the persons, okay? Uh, so the idea is uh, I can detect the arrivals of the, uh, of the information particles and then from, by, by using the acetons because they absorb lights, but then I can look at the fluorescence, and I, I, I can say one if the fluorescence is up, uh, on, or zero if the fluorescence is closed, quenched. Of course, I can read, I can write, oh, sorry, uh, this information on the particles by making the chemical reaction. So I can write zero or, or not. So the logic is a bit different here. In, in if I have not uh, absorbance, there, there is no signal, okay? If I have uh, absorbance, so it means that my receiver is just waiting for, doesn't matter the time, right? Once the information particle arrives, my detector needs to look at the fluorescence. Up or down, it's all, it's above or down the, uh, the threshold, so. It means that they, I have no more problem with the uh, timing between the, the X and the X. Uh, because I can see, okay, here I have no signal. No, so it doesn't mean zero right now. It means no signal here. Once this, the signal arrives, I can detect it one or zero. This is the simulation. Again, we move back to the 
prototype, we included the loop, another uh, Yapton mixing chamber here. So this is the bit that we release when you want to say zero, when you want to write zero, we inject copper, copper will quench. So uh, my particles will solve, but do not emit in fluorescence. So I can uh, feel them that they arrive, but I can say, I can detect that what I wrote down on the particles is zero and not one. Okay, more difficult, what we call IOT, communication based IOT. This is not IOT, but for sure, but this is the way I will uh, convince the editor to publish uh, the, the papers, more or less. Uh, again, the, the idea was, if I have a control center that can uh, add selectivity, interact with some actuators, uh, what I need is, it, it is something that is uh, related to the actuators, okay? Uh, from a chemical point of view, we can change the emission spectra of our nanoparticles. You see, you can have blue, cyan, and green glowing, glowing uh, particles. So it means that you, if you have a detector that is able to distinguish between these three fluorescent colors, uh, you can selectively interact with the uh, other. So this was the the idea. Of course, here I should have the identity of this coefficient uh, in order to have uh, a selectivity between the actuators. But since we have to select different uh, systems, different uh, information particles, we have we need more reservoir. So we mm, adjust the range of our uh, detector. Uh, our, sorry, our transmitter. We have a selection map. Uh, right now, we can fill in the loop with up to ten different different uh, vessels. So we can select the the proper mixture of the substances that you can put inside the loop. And then once that the bulb is on, you can use the the proper uh, uh, system that you like, or you can mix them if you like. Doing that, for example, we 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 connected to the apparatus one an ether and a thermometer. So we we with our inversion logic, we just switch it off and down the heater according to the detection of the proper information particles in order to get some feedback to the uh, set point. We, we can do the same if we have one, uh, a trending, uh, a trending uh, set point. We, for example, adding some salt to a solution in order to have increasing the, con the conductivity of the solution. Uh, you can add uh, acid on basic uh, solution to drops to your your vessel, and in order to have uh, um, control the pH, this is something that we did. Uh, Actually, this is a, a, a fake one, okay? So we just use the, the information coming from the molecular communication to uh, switch on the relay, the switch on, switch off the heater, okay? So it's not uh, everything connected with molecular communication, but the message is transferred in this way. Then uh, the actuator is a normal heater that switch off and switch on with a simple legal controller that you can program. This is uh, when we use all the actuators together. So we have three wavelengths that we detect. As you can see, once the, we, we have a threshold, once the, 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 the selective, as you can see, this is the signal that, that, that the critical wall gets, B and C. As you can see, at these two detectors, the, the signal is less than the threshold. So all of these things we resolve, but you can on this one, on this one, <coughs> switch off this one, this one together at the same time, because you can release a mixture of two nanoparticles. Uh, then you can switch off, switch on everything together, any of the actuators. Then we try to switch off, it doesn't work, for the, 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 because there is some uh, problem on the situation. Let's 
So this is the, 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 the what we call it the fluorescent nano particle based at the internet of things. Uh, it's not the internet of things, I told you, but this is the idea. Uh, back to the active implant and medical devices, uh, uh, what we are trying to do now is uh, uh, making this kind of uh, communication. Let's say you have an unstable uh, temperature, uh, if you have some infection and your system, uh, your body locally is warming up and you want to communicate this kind of message to some releasing of uh, some drug. Uh, if you want to do this binary code, you will get uh, plenty of time that is useless. So uh, what we try to do is some, let's say, multi communication by using a game, this kind. So we uh, we have, we included the um, scanning capabilities to our detector. And so we are not looking only one wavelength, but we are scanning all wavelength during the, the travel. So this is the, the scanning the, of the, uh, the detector, of the knob of the detector. This is the signal arrives. What you have here is some features like this. It depends uh, at the change, uh, once you change color. Actually, they change also if you, if you send the same uh, particle at different time. Because since there is no syncing between the scanning and the timing that you release, uh, uh, the signal changes uh, even if you are releasing the, the same. But in the Fourier space, that it, it not some problem. So if you look at here, these are two different uh, nanoparticles. This is the same uh, to, to, to different times. Doesn't matter. We use this for some more complex uh, encoding, and then we train it as a receiver to nothing compared with what Max is doing. Uh, that is able to detect the, all this feature that you can get the receiver, so you can use this and, for example, you can, more in one uh, releasing of, of information, but you, you, you can transfer the, the, the information. Uh, then, how, how time do I have? Okay. I have time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, diffusion. Uh, of course, if I have uh, uh, less d, a lower d, the peak tends to be shorter. So uh, it means that I will have what you say, what you call I S I, right? Intersystem, intersymbol interface. Okay. Uh, from my point of view, from a chemical point of view, if I want to decrease the T or information particles and look at stock Einstein, I can do two things. Increase the radius, decrease the viscosity of the, the solution. So let's think about the first. If I want to increase the radius of the particles, that's a problem. If I increase the particle, pro, uh, the, part, uh, the radius of the particle, the particle will not be fluorescent and will tend to precipitate. They are no more soluble. So how we can do that? Okay, here there is some rocket uh, rocket uh, chemistry, but I can understand what, what we use. Let's say you do want to increase our uh, dimension, okay? Uh, if uh, all of us, um, if it represents one particles, and we are moving, we are walking, if we just uh, tends to handshake each other's and release and shake and release and shake and release. So it means we will uh, form an, uh, what we call a supramolecular cluster that is uh, behaving uh, like if you have a big uh, molecule, but it's not a big one. So it means that they stick each other's so they are slowing down that in terms of the diffusivity. Uh, but they are still solvable, okay? So this is the trick that we use it by adding this uh, red linker here that is just inducing some handshaking during the 
there was. This is something that a colleague of mine did in the lab. That's very, very smart, right? Uh, so doing this, you can decrease. This is the experiment. This is the word simulation. You can decrease the, the, the width of, of the pit. Um, what happens? This is true in general in the fusion basic communication, wave communication. But if you have microfluidic tunnels, uh, the, the effect is the opposite. Uh, if you have low T, you will get high get large, large signal. If you have high T, you have, sorry, you you will have a shorter pass uh, because of tail diffusion. So that is occurs in this uh, situation. So it's completely different problem. Uh, what we try to do is in this field uh, in the application is to change the viscosity of the solution. If you have water, just add some glycerol. It's an it's a honey like solution system that you can add, it's well solvable. So you see <coughs> the shape of the signal changes if you change the viscosity of the solution. We all, all also uh, use this kind uh, of uh, for, for application for for some diffusivity or viscosity to use the shift key or something like that. Uh, or for, for example, you can use this approach for measuring the, the viscosity of the solution if you like. If you want to use this kind of approach as a census. Uh, but I don't really like this approach because I have to replace the, all the solution that I use. So this message is fake because we, we just uh, uh, summed up some different signal because at each experiment you have to clean everything, change the viscosity, and clean and change it. It's, it's not applied. You cannot apply it. Please. What we want to do is release only the plug containing the nanoparticles that has different viscosity. Okay. This is what we want to do because in this way you can use the same uh, tra uh, transport media and you inject some plugs with different viscosity. Uh, but, okay, we start to do this uh, uh, firstly in the lab because we, at that time we wasn't able to to simulate this. Uh, I asked it to Felicetti in, uh, in Perugia to help us, but uh, it doesn't, then, then COVID arrived. Um, so, and the, the why we are going to do this kind of experiment? Because we are moving in this kind of application. Uh, we want to communicate the glucose to some uh, insulin or glucagon in injection system. So we want to communicate this information uh, in a proper way, in a safe way inside the body. This is, we have a, a national project on this. Actually we have because money comes <laughs> and uh, we, we get some results. Okay, this is uh, Google's trend in the blood of a, a healthy person. And this is the variation that you, you have. Uh, if you want to communicate the variation by using this approach, uh, changing the viscosity, you can do this. But what happens is that at the experimental point of view, what happens is this. It forms some fingers. Any instability on the traveling part will induce this kind of fingers. Uh, that that we we didn't uh, know actually. Okay, we proposed some uh, very simple treatment of this stuff. Uh, let's skip this. We included in the velocity in the standard uh, um, laminar velocity in the pipe. We added this this part of in order to represent this inter instability between the interfaces. Uh, you have this random number that you can generate, and this is zero when you have not different in terms of viscosity, so it's okay. It's zero when you have no uh, 
the you know, gradient of concentration is zero when you have no velocity, or for example, or at least is less when you have less velocity because this is an effect related to the velocity. For example, so it means that at the edge you have less uh, instability. What happens if you do this the simulation? This is not the scale, of course. These features appears in the bug because of this instability between two, uh, two behaving uh, system. So the signal at the receiver is different. You can use this kind of signal to encode different symbols. This is what we tried. Uh, this is some random signal induced by random viscosity. As you can see, there is this feature here, some feature here, some feature here like that. It depends on the viscosity. You can train a, a detector to uh, being able to detect this, and then this is the, uh, the table that you that we use if you wanna. There is this symbol to this bit. And this is the results, as you can see. This spike of glycerol uh, can be transparent uh, with timing of 15 mils, that is fit with the real body. And by just encoding this kind of information on the, by changing the viscosity. So we can use only one hour particles by simple changing the viscosity of the solution because we will have uh, different features on, on the detector that uh, if you are able to detect, uh, you can use it. Okay. No conclusion, let's say take home message. Uh, as you, I can see, you, you can understand, I really like this kind of uh, way to communicate. Um, yesterday we just, after the dinner we discussed the what actually means molecular communication? Uh, this is what, in my field, should be uh, should mean. Uh, so uh, we have uh, plenty of problem, a lot of problem, and that uh, can uh, and I, I didn't find any solution in the literature right now because I get some uh, some uh, problem. For example, here. Uh, we discussed yesterday about this. It's not the same if you send this and this after that, or the opposite. But there's no over capability of the detector to, to understand the, the symbol that there is. Uh, the the se sequence uh, it, uh, is not it is affecting the way of the receiver understands this. This is something that to me should be important to include in the theory to, the, to encode something like this. Uh, there are, I told you, there are some, uh, when you include uh, some chemical reaction inside, uh, and you have no white noise, and you have uh, colored noise, the chemical reaction can uh, get different reasons. Get to different ways. So, something that could be included in the, in the field. And then there is uh, another, the last, very last thing that I want to say to you. Uh, I think that we are missing the interface. We are considering the communication uh, inside a homogeneous medium. What happens if you have an interface between uh, water and air? Of water and oil, for example. Uh, I can prepare hydrophobic nonparticles that I can just drop on top of the, the water. They cannot go down because they are hydrophobic. They cannot evaporate because they are they are big. They are very mobile because they have no uh, constraining of water because they can, can generate just fine. There are a lot of uh, uh, biological uh, examples, if you like, but actually I really don't, uh, don't need the, the, the application. I, uh, this is the, 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 the something that uh, I'm going to explore uh, in terms of uh, movement of communication of particles in this field. So last slide for 
just for saying the group, Luba Figuera is the, the very first PhD student, Federico is in the audience, Giovanni Ribesti is a colleague of mine that uh, uh, we spent a lot of time discussing about modern communication, it's uh, funding a whole of you for your kind of Thank you. You need a good chemistry. <laughs> 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 you need a good chemistry connection. That, that, that's a good idea. Oh. Yeah. So in terms of uh, what you mentioned at the end of the um, spatially varying diffusion coefficients, so what what do you see is the the, the problem that they can in the, in the what, what what are you missing in, in dealing with this? Uh, in what field? So at the, at the end, you were mentioning. For example, you have some nanoparticles diffusing in uh, over an interface between oils. Yeah. And different, yeah. Right? So, um, what, what is the, the the question you're interested in? Uh, yeah, the question yeah. is uh, first, how fast they are, uh, how fast they move. Because if you add and they, uh, if you put, the, the, I can do. Uh, may I? Drop? Please. With. I'm a teacher, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you you release a small drop of now particles here. I, uh, this is the X and this is the Rx. You want to move this particle from here to here. At the interface, you, if you have the water here, you have now particles here. If you add some uh, surface active molecules like soap, yeah, you will have a very fast movement and random but uh, constraining in this direction because all these molecules that uh, eat each other push the particles uh, like this. Uh, I know the surface tension, which are you know, uh, any parameters, but I, I'm not able to have any uh, simulation of this. I can do it in the lab. I have a uh, 1,000 frame per second camera for looking at this, but I'm not able to simulate this. Uh, as I told you, if I do all the experiment, I miss the first part, uh, and miss something that uh, I would avoid. And how this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, interfacial molecular communication, you say, okay? uh, how you can encode different uh, information like here, you, how we can store the message here. Uh, may, may I change the uh, particles? Yes. Or or not? There's a plenty of experiment that I could do if there is some interest. I have a very technical question. Um, <coughs> your lab switching system, I'm telling mm -hmm. the loop. Yeah. Um, in the video it looked slow. So do you have like a mechanical time limit of how quickly you can do that? Okay, the, the switching is sometimes. Yeah, but the filling the loop. It depends on the, the flow the, or the okay. traveling flow. Yeah. That is, in our case, it's very slow. Okay. Um, because uh, we, we, we are not looking at the fast uh, signal. Yeah, we have very slow. But you can increase. Uh, 
uh, okay, it depends on the pump. If you are speaking about technical parts, uh, if you have uh, a microfluidic uh, pipe, you need an, uh, uh, you cannot use a normal syringe. You need an high power pump. couple of thousand years. Uh, you cannot use the standard uh, uh, pump uh, or pen stabbing pump. You need some piston-based pump that pushing. And in order to have a stable drift, uh, you need a, a two-piston-based pump that works uh, together. You can find it. Okay. And then maybe a follow-up question. Do you have an idea of the pressure you have in your system then? No, but they are we, we just guess it, but they are very slow, very low pressure. Okay. Uh, it's open and uh, on the opposite, so it's, uh, I have no idea, but it's very low pressure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have one question uh, on like to what extent your system setup depends on the particles being fluorescent. So Say for example you wanted to employ Murat's receiver, so uh, biofed. Um, so how? I, I mean, to, to what extent would this change your? Not no. actually so, not. I mean, es especially in the context of the surface molecules, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, sort of. I actually use the OFET for detection. I use the uh, quartz crystal microbalance balanced sensing. Uh, you have a quartz that uh, uh, you can find the resonance of the quartz. Once the, the particles arrive, the resonance change. So you look at the changing the, the shift to the resonance. You can detect molecules. Uh, we use laser-based sulfur plasma resonance. Uh, it, I, I just uh, I need just to change the, uh, the detector in, in including technique. Just in setting. Of course, if the particles are, for example, he is using a single strand DNA, right? I can, I, depends on my, cannot touch single strand DNA on the surface of the particles, so the particles can have this kind of selectivity, and you can even detect the fluorescence of the particles, including the, the selectivity given by the bioship. We can do that. Uh, there is no limitation. Okay, so maybe last question, I think. Oh, yes, let's do both. So, for you first. Okay, um, uh, could you mix the fluorescent particles with other particles that have different properties? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. so that it is uh, something with magnetic particles. Uh, this word would be the obvious question. So you don't lose the fluorescent properties. It depends. It depends on the properties. But the problem with magnetic particles is they they are dark and they uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not easy to do. But I can give you a hint. Uh, um, I, I, I have a friends of mine working the, in R and D on ST microelectronics. They just released the, uh, uh, an um, uh, electrostatic sensors. Uh, it's very uh, easy to. They, he, he told me that it's very easy to implement. I can give you uh, some videos because if you have any electrostatic charged particles that is obvious in this kind of experiments, you we could even. Uh, Detect this, but never try. Of course, if, 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 you, if you have a dark brown plug, you will never see any influences. That, that's true. Yeah, uh, just a short question. Do you have a, uh, so you, you, are, you also implement a like, control system with sensors and actuators, the controllers, I mean, the insulin uh, example that you showed. Uh, is it is it on off control that you're applying? So if you're above threshold, it's on. Yeah, we actually we are not applying nothing. It's uh, oh okay. <laughs> it's uh -huh. just a movie like. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we are just uh, hypothesizing. If you have this to communicate, we are communicating that. Uh, we we well, just applied uh, for a European project in this field, so we see <laughs> if we can uh, get money to to implement that. Uh, the problem right there is the uh, 
safety of the communication. It's the, these are very sensitive information that you are communicating. Uh, so if you, uh, molecular communication is very uh, safe, intrinsically safe, because it's of your body. Uh, and in that case, it's important to be sure that nobody is changing the number that will induce releasing of insulin that could kill it. I mean, no, could kill me. That's like, there's another topic that uh, I don't like to discuss, but okay. Okay, thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you.